Kata Containers has been really exciting to be a part of. Uh, it's been awesome to, uh, to see the progress that the team has been making, and it's also been really interesting to see the, uh, the kinds of people that, uh, that have been getting involved, um, because container security is really just a, 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 a huge um, area of interest that so many people want to figure out. Um, so very, very excited about, uh, about the Kata Containers project. Um, so I mentioned earlier that we had, we had four demos. We're about to have our second one, uh, which is going to take advantage of this lovely rack of gear here that we can hear more about. So please help me welcome from Red Hat, uh, Mark McLaughlin. OK, good morning, everybody. So today, I want to talk about OpenStack's role in what we're calling the open infrastructure movement and how we believe some exciting new work from the Red Hat team is going to contribute to the success of this movement. But first, if a movement is to bring people together, we've got to be really clear on what this movement stands for and what it stands against. And this movement is set in the time of digital transformation, where software is eating the world, and businesses increasingly understand that time to value with technology will be key to their su success. So for me, the vision is simple. It's about ensuring that the majority of new software will be built on platforms which empower application developers and operators. Now, I know that sounds a little bit lofty and vague, but flip it around, right? We stand against a future world where the infrastructure that underlies moder modern applications is exclusively supplied by a small number of hyperscale cloud providers. So we're working to prevent a future where the global computing infrastructure market is dominated by Amazon AWS, Google Cl Cloud, Microsoft Azure, and a small number of others. Why? Because we believe that a healthy competitive market is key to future innovation. Now, this vision doesn't require you to believe that somehow Amazon, Microsoft, and Google are evil monsters. No, this is about agreeing that a world where they dominate the market would not be in anyone's interests. Instead, we believe that a healthy, competitive market is good for consumers of infrastructure, those application developers and operators. OK, so what does a healthy, competitive market look like? Well, one simple model to help us reason about the level of competitiveness in a market is called Porter's Five Forces Framework. It was published the year I was be before I was born, so this is nothing new. But it does help us quickly get a sense of OpenStack's role in terms of these forces. First, we help to increase the threat of new entrants by providing software that powers new entrants to the public cloud market. Second, we help to increase the threat of substitutes by providing an alternative source of infrastructure to the public cloud. And third, we help to ensure that buyers continue to have strong negotiating power by making it commonplace for buyers to switch between infrastructure providers. And this has also been the context for Red Hat's strategic imperative for as long as OpenStack has existed. It's what we call the open hybrid cloud. With the combination of Red Hat, Enterprise Linux, OpenStack, and OpenShift, we provide both that on-premise infrastructure alternative and a compelling containers-based developer platform that sp spans all infrastructure footprints. So this morning, we are announcing the upcoming release of Red Hat OpenStack Platform 13. We're particularly excited about some breakthrough integration and user experience improvements for users deploying OpenShift with OpenStack. Now, we also understand that the challenges here go far beyond just the technology. So we're also announcing the availability of a containers on cloud services solution, which helps our customers address the complexity of deploying containers on cloud and allows them to focus on the challenge of transforming their organization culture. BBVA is a great example of this. And they're a 2018 Red Hat Innovation Awards winner. So BBVA is a global financial services company headquartered in Spain. They have 70 million customers in over 30 different countries. And when they realized that they must embrace the challenge of keeping pace with the rapidly changing expectations of their customers, they decided to build a global platform based on OpenStack and OpenShift. Now, Obviously, I'm up here and, and very proud that BBVA chose to partner with Red Hat to achieve their goals, particularly because they called out our values and our expertise as their reasons for making that choice. But we as a community should also be very proud of their technology choice. 
BBVA explicitly chose OpenShift and Kubernetes to build their PaaS because it helped them be free from being locked into any one infrastructure supplier. And they chose OpenStack because it was the obvious choice for building on-premise, scalable, automatable infrastructure. So for them, this was the perfect combination. So what we're seeing at BVVA is while these two projects and communities, OpenStack and Kubernetes, have completely separate missions, separate identities, they do come together in completely complementary and overlapping ways for our customers. So I like to think of the joint mission for this open infrastructure movement as enabling our customers to turn their data center into an application platform built on the best of open source technology in a way that seamlessly bridges to the public cloud. We at Red Hat want to do our part in catalyzing this movement around a community that's genuinely aligned around these goals. Now, we know that's easier said than done, because we all too quickly fall into the trap of viewing this in a, in a in kind of a tribal way and seeing these communities as competitive. But funnily enough, this diagram is kind of exactly how you'd explain to a child the concept of a non-zero-sum game. And yet, sometimes we all struggle to internalize and act on this idea. I believe that one of the greatest opportunities for collaboration is in the problem space of deploying and operating these technologies on physical infrastructure at scale. And when I think about the awesome team that we've built around OpenStack at Red Hat, we're uniquely experienced when it comes to dealing with the real world challenges of dealing with physical infrastructure. And that's true of any group that's been at the coal face of running OpenStack in production these past number of years. Other communities shouldn't have to go about building this experience from scratch, particularly given our overlapping interests. Now, we know quite well that catalyzing this kind of collaboration is really quite difficult, particularly in an area where we're also opinionated. Indeed, back in Hong Kong during my keynote, way back at the, the Hong Kong summit in 2013, I used this animation to describe how we were building a new community around a deployment project called Triple O. And we were hopeful that this would offer that venue for deeper collaboration in this space. Since then, we've shipped over seven major version updates to this tool in our product, and it has been used by hundreds of customers to deploy and operate their environments. In that time, it has also evolved significantly based on user feedback, and now is increasingly best described as a powerful and flexible framework based on OpenStack, Ansible, and containers. And that brings me to this imposing piece of kit behind me here, which is threatening to collapse the stage. Um, so we brought this with us today to show how Triple O can be used now to deploy Kubernetes on bare metal alongside an OpenStack cloud. I hope that sounds pretty cool, because we've got Angus Thomas here on stage, one of the OpenStack engineering managers. And um, he's going to show us how it all works. All right. Thank you very much, Mark. So as you can see, to make the open infrastructure real, we've brought on-premise hardware onto our stage. And thanks to IBM and HP and Dell and Supermicro, we have a multi-vendor rack here. Particular thanks to IBM, we've got a Power9 machine in here, so it's actually a multi-architecture rack as well. And being open infrastructure, of course, it all runs Linux. And we're going to be using Red Hat Enterprise Linux and some of the open source software that Red Hat supports to deploy and put the rack to use. The rack has got 1,056 physical cores, 5.5 terabytes of RAM, and 50 terabytes of storage. So there's a lot of capacity there. But what I really want to talk about is putting it to work. We're going to use Red Hat OpenStack Platform Director, which is based on the Upstream Triple O project, to deploy OpenShift, which is our Kubernetes distribution. Deploying OpenShift in this way gives us the best of both worlds. You get bare metal performance, but with an underlying infrastructure as a service that can take care of deploying new instances and scaling out applications and a lot of the things that you come to expect from a cloud provider. Now, on the screen right now, you can see the director UI and information about the hardware in the rack which is already being managed. At the top level, there's information about the number of cores, the amount of RAM and disks, in each machine, if I click into a bit, there's a, there's a lot more information about MAC addresses and IPs and the management interface and the BIOS and the kernel version. 
go a little further, and we can see information about the disks. Now, all this is important because we want to make sure that we're putting workloads exactly where we want them. Mark, could you please power on the two new machines at the top of the rack there? No problem. Hopefully, I'll get the right ones. This one and this one. All right, great. Thank you. So when these two machines come up on the network, Director is going to see them, see that they're new and not already under management, and is going to, going to use Ironic Inspector to boot the Ironic Python agent RAM disk, generate a hardware profile, register them with Director, add them to the list here, and bring them under management straight away. So everything about Director is based on OpenStack and is upstream in the Triple O project. Director actually is a single node OpenStack instance. It uses Keystone for authentication, and Neutron for network management, Nova for scheduling and Heat for orchestration, and it uses a lot of Ansible as well. But particularly, it uses Ironic, OpenStack's bare metal hypervisor project. That's how it actually takes the control of this hardware and manages it. So the next thing I wanted to tell you about is the profiles that we have for each machine. This is how we match the hardware to the role that we want it to fulfill. It's how we make sure that the machines that have all the disks run our storage services like Ceph, and the machines with all the RAM and the CPUs run our application workloads. So we can automatically discover new machines on the network, and we can automatically match them to one of those profiles. And that's how we streamline and scale up operations. So now I want to talk about deploying our software. We have a set of validations. We've created these based on our experience with deploying multi-machine applications like OpenStack and now OpenShift. And some of the validations actually run before, they start the, before you start the deployment. They look at what you're going to do, and they'll check for potential problems like the wrong VLAN tags on a switch port or DHCP not running where it should be. And they'll preemptively find those things, which has to be a lot better than getting into debugging. Something that you may well not, not have seen before is multiple deployments all managed by a director, all on the same hardware. So before we came out here, I deployed an instance of OpenStack, which is also running multi-nodes on this rack ready for tenant workloads. Just to keep me honest, this is the Red Hat OpenStack platform UI, which is based on Horizon. And that's ready for whatever VM-based workloads people might want to put on it. <coughs> we could, I should make clear, we could have made this rack 100% OpenShift, but there's a lot of instances where customers get value out of putting OpenStack and OpenShift next to each other in that way. All right, it's time to talk about the deployment of OpenShift itself. If I switch over to the deployment plan, there's a series of steps. The first thing is taking care of the hardware. I already said a little bit about how Director manages hardware, and we've got plenty of hardware in this rack. The next thing is the deployment configuration. Let me click in here. This is where you get to set exactly the right parameters for how you want the application to be deployed. Make sure it's going to be just right for your environment. As you can see on the screen here, there's options around enabling TLS for network encryption. If I go a little further, there's options around uh, enabling IPv6 and network isolation so that different classes of traffic go through different physical interfaces. You can change this as much as you need to to make it right for your environment. Commit those changes so that you can do iterative redeployments. You don't need to keep changing it again and again. And then we have the roles. Roles are about the software that we're actually going to put onto the machines. And Director ships with a lot of pre-configured roles for the software that Red Hat supports. And you can just use those, and you can modify them a little bit, add a monitoring agent to whatever you might need to do. Or you can create entirely new roles depending on what you need. Once all those things are set, we can click through. The validations are all green. So we're in business, and I can start the deployment. Now, at this point, the director node is going to use Ironic to power cycle the target machines. They're going to get pixie booted and provisioned with a Red Hat Enterprise Linux operating system. Then they're going to pull in the containers and configure the services and bring the whole thing up. So one last thing. Once all of this is done and OpenShift is deployed, you're going to want to keep the director node around. Director has a lot of what we call day two operational capabilities around bringing in new hardware, scaling out existing applications, performing and orchestrating updates, and critically, upgrades as well. OK, so with all of that, let me switch over now to an instance of OpenShift 
running on bare metal, deployed by director on our rack. And at this point, it's ready to light up the whole rack with containerized application workloads to take on top of our bare metal private cloud. Wow. Thank you, Angus. That's really, really cool. OK, so maybe it's easy to miss the significance of what we've just shown there, so it bears repeating. Triple O is based on OpenStack. It uses several key components of OpenStack, like Nova and Ironic. So this is core OpenStack services being used to support Kubernetes on bare metal in a way that offers the same power and flexibility that we've built for production deployments of OpenStack. So if you're interested in Kubernetes on bare metal in the real world, then please do take a look at what Triple O has to offer. We'd love for you to join with us and continue to push forward the envelope of collaboration in this area. So just to recap, Red Hat is excited about this open infrastructure movement. And we see the opportunity for a mission that goes beyond any one project. And we see endless opportunities for collaboration. We're committed to building the de deep cross-community relationships required. And we're looking forward to working with you all on this. Thank you. All right. Well, uh, Mark oh, there he is. Ingus. Yes, here I am. <laughs> I snuck up. You can't hear me over the fans. Um, so thanks for doing this demo. This is awesome. Uh, uh, Red Hat, when did you have your Red Hat Summit? Um, it was the week before last. Yeah, so it's so about 10 days. 10 days ago, yes. Yep. And uh, um, you guys did an awesome demo with this, this same gear there. Is that correct? Same gear. The only real trouble was getting across the border and not yeah. paying $30,000 <laughs> sales tax. But, uh, <laughs> Well, thanks for, for bringing it up here. And I just wanted to reiterate, uh, uh, Angus, you know, everything you showed here, you just talked about you know, it's Nova, it's Ironic. Mm -hmm. um, are there any bits that you have that are not, that are not uh, getting pushed upstream or available or going to be available? What's the status of the no, software no. that makes it work? This is all being done upstream in the, in the Triple O project. And when we started working on Kubernetes deployment upstream in Triple O, we started with the Cube Spray, and then we moved on to OpenShift Ansible. But yeah, it's all upstream in Triple O for people who want to check it out. Great, cool. So, so um, if you just happen to have one of these lying around, you can, uh, you can go get the software and, and run it exactly the same way as they did. Well, cool. thank you guys very much. Thank you very much. We enjoyed it. All right, thank you. <clears throat>